Hey everyone! Have you ever wondered which is more dangerous, voltage or current? It's a question that sparks curiosity and often leads to heated debates. Today we're diving into this topic to discuss our opinions. But before we do, let's explore a scenario that might shed some light on our question. Imagine a small boat drifting on the ocean. Suddenly, a strong wind blows, creating big waves that knock the boat over. Now, let's pause for a moment and think, what caused the boat to overturn? The wind or the waves it made? If someone says it's the wind, others might argue that it is the waves that directly caused the boat to flip. On the other hand, if someone blames the waves, others might counter that the waves are just the result of the wind. After all, without the wind, there wouldn't be any waves at all. Likewise, in electricity, current is what directly shocks and burns you. But without voltage, there's no current flowing at all. Thus, from this story, we can briefly understand that voltage and current are interrelated and both contribute to the danger of electricity. Neither can be overlooked or underestimated. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. First, let's delve into current. It's crucial to understand how much current will be considered hazardous to humans. According to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, U.S. Department of Labor, even a tiny amount of current, just 0.006 amps or 6 milliamps, is sufficient to cause severe pain to human body. Furthermore, currents exceeding 0.01 amps or 10 milliamps are likely to be lethal. This is because the higher current flowing through the body can lead to muscle contractions, and in severe cases, disruption of breathing and heart function. I'll include the reference in the description below. From this data, we can see that the human body is highly sensitive, fragile, and vulnerable to electric current. Thus, it's crucial to exercise extreme caution when handling electricity. After understanding the threshold of hazardous current, you might wonder how much current actually flows through our bodies in case of an electric shock. This brings us to Ohm's law. The amount of current will depend on both the voltage we encounter and our body's resistance. According to IEEE 1048 to 2003, human body resistance consists of both skin resistance and internal body resistance. The skin resistance value varies depending on the measurement points, contact area, and the body's condition. For instance, if measured from hand to hand, dry skin typically has a higher resistance, ranging from 1500 ohms up to 13,500 ohms. Conversely, wet skin resistance typically has a lower resistance, ranging from 610 ohms to 1260 ohms, making it more hazardous in the case of electric shock due to higher current flow. Additionally, the internal body resistance is around 500 ohms. However, it's crucial to recognize that each person's body resistance may vary, resulting in different currents flowing through them. Next, let's examine voltage, which is the source of electrical energy. As mentioned earlier, without voltage, there would be no current flowing. But how much voltage can result in hazardous current to humans? According to the IECTS 60479-1 standard, a low-frequency alternating voltage exceeding 25 volts for children and 50 volts for adults is considered hazardous. However, it's important to note that voltages lower than these values mentioned are not completely safe to touch. These guidelines typically refer to electric shock scenarios with dry skin conditions where the resistance is considerably high. If the body resistance is low, such as in the case of wet or injured skin, even a small voltage may result in a lethal amount of current. For a clearer understanding, let's use a simple analogy. Imagine hanging a piece of cardboard at a certain distance from a standing fan. When we turn on the fan, we observe that the cardboard is gently lifted at a specific angle from its original position. In this analogy, we use the fan speed to represent voltage, the distance between the cardboard and the fan as resistance, and the maximum angle to which the cardboard is lifted as current. Let's apply an equivalent scale. Voltage ranges from 0 to 500 volts, resistance from 1 ohms to 20 kilo ohms, and current from 0 to a dangerous level above 6 milliamperes. At a fixed fan speed or voltage, when we move the cardboard closer to the fan, indicating a reduction of the resistance, the angle of lift increases, signifying a higher current. Conversely, moving the cardboard further away increases the resistance, resulting in a smaller angle of lift and lower current. 
This demonstrates that with fixed voltage, the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. Now if we keep the cardboard at the furthest position, indicating that the resistance is fixed, subsequently increasing the fan speed or voltage will result in a greater angle of lift and current. Conversely, when we lower down the fan speed, the angle and current will decrease as well. This analogy illustrates that with resistance unchanged, current varies proportionally with voltage. Through this demonstration, we understand that current is influenced by both voltage and resistance. Therefore, to determine whether a current poses a hazard to humans, we must also consider voltage and resistance as per Ohm's law. In electrical devices, manufacturers typically provide labels or technical data sheets detailing product specifications, including voltage and current information. However, the current indicated on these labels is based on the resistance of the device itself, rather than the resistance of the human body. For instance, consider a laptop adapter labeled 19.5 volts and 12 amps. Here, the 12 amps represents the rated current but not the actual current experienced by someone who accidentally touches the bare terminals. If a person touches the terminals with dry hands having higher resistance of 5 kilo ohms, the current flowing through the body may be around 3.9 milliamps, which doesn't reach the lethal limit according to the guideline mentioned earlier. However, it's important to understand that while the current in this scenario may not be lethal due to the higher body resistance, the person can still feel the shock. Now, let's take the example of a phone charger adapter, labeled as 5 volts and 2 amps. The 2 amps current refers to the current flowing through the phone when charging. If a person accidentally touches the bare terminal with or injured hand, even though the voltage is much lower than in the previous case, the lower body resistance still poses a significant risk. For instance, if the body resistance is only 500 ohms, the current flow may increase to around 0.01 amps or 10 milliamps. The person might not be able to let go, potentially posing a lethal risk. Therefore, as we discussed earlier, even though the guidelines suggest that 25 volts for children and 50 volts is a safe limit for adults, it's essential to exercise caution when handling devices with voltages lower than this limit, especially in cases of wet skin or open wounds. Moving on, let's consider a scenario at a higher voltage level. If a person touches a live cable with voltage of 230 volts, assuming a higher body resistance at that moment is 13.5 kilooms, the resulting current will also be at a dangerous level, around 17 milliamps. The individual might experience a painful shock and may struggle to let go due to loss of muscle control, which can lead to more severe injuries. In this scenario, it is observed that, even though body resistance is higher, it doesn't guarantee safety at higher voltage levels. In addition to voltage, current, and resistance, the duration of time the current flows through the body is also a critical factor, affecting the severity of an electric shock. For example, if we accidentally touch a faulty power cable connected to a continuous voltage supply at low frequency, typically 50 or 60 hertz. If we fail to release our grip and the contact continues for a longer duration, the current can cause burns to the skin. This can create wounds that further reduce the resistance and lead to higher current flow. Moreover, higher currents flowing through the body can disrupt heart rhythm and breathing activity potentially lead to death. In conclusion, let's revisit the question, which is more dangerous, voltage or current? In our opinion, both are closely interrelated and both are dangerous. Just like the relationship between wind and waves that causes boat to flip in our earlier analogy, both voltage and current contribute to electrically hazard incidents. Last but not least, it is important to practice electrical safety precautions, such as using insulated tools and wearing appropriate personal protective equipment that can significantly increase the overall resistance. Besides, we should follow proper procedures to minimize the risk of electric shock. That concludes today's video, and we hope you enjoyed the discussion. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and share it with others. Thank you for watching.